easily see why everybody ducks in Earl Fryer. The best finishers in the business. He's going to throw punches until one or two things happen. Either the referee stops it or he knocks you out. Because Fryer is one of the best finishers I've ever seen in boxing. Once he really gets you hurt. Nobody responded more positively to being punched in the face than Aaron Pryor. He grew up surrounded by violence. Both his mom and sister were arrested and tried for shooting men in their life. Both were freed on grounds of self-defense. With an insane home life, Aaron tried not to be home as much as possible. He was sleeping on park benches by his pre-teens. A family friend took him in who happened to live next door to a boxing gym. One day, Aaron gets curious. The young man wanders in. He gave and took his first hit for fun. With a violent broken home behind him, Aaron found the escape he sought from his oppressive past in boxing. Aaron had a pattern of thrill-seeking behavior, like breaking into the bullpens at the Cincinnati slaughterhouses trying to ride bulls as a teen. Aaron took amateur fights like a user hits a bowl. He escapes three minutes at a time. Aaron fought 220 amateur fights by the time he was 21. His defining moment was a legendary war with future superstar Thomas Hearns. Hearns, junior Olympic champion, and a very, very fine boxer. Pryor certainly wants to uh, finish it in the Philly Clarence. Sticky. Hearns does not try to flex with Pryor. It's too hard. There's a big overhand right by Pryor. A left hook by Pryor. It's a better four-round stretch than any pro fight you can think of. While his suicidal style was hardly the best fit to make an Olympic team. Aaron knew he could go pro and make a name for himself. Aaron reacted to the ring bell with the same overwhelming enthusiasm as a dog hearing a doorbell. Every fight, every round, Aaron Pryor ran at his opponents. The majority of them just crumpled under the sheer intensity of him. To talk technique, Aaron was something else. He could do anything, jab and move on the outside with unusual grace. His affinity for the marching one-to-one -one combination was the only sure thing on offense. What came after it was anybody's guess. His feet were on a constant hunt for angles. He was an instinctive and unorthodox blend of madness and genius. But it was the thrill-seeking personality and iron chin beneath it all that made his style work. By 1980, Aaron is 22-0 with 20 KOs, coming into a fight with puncher Leonidas Esprilla. With colorful boxing Pryor was unusually calm in the first round, respecting the power of his lanky opponent, until Pryor tasted it. Leonardo said he was going to bite his time and Aaron's work rate was psychotic. He's content to let Aaron just punch away. And we are in the final seconds of this first round. And it didn't matter how hard you hit him. He'd just smile and bury you in boxing gloves. Time and again, Asprilla exploded. Time and again, Pryor smiled and kept stalking. Relentless 
attack by Fryer. But in round 10, Aaron proved his unreal cardio to hit a Skrilla with everything on the move list to put him away. This is a barrage that finally put Leonidas out of action. Straight right hand, left hooks. Aaron's academics because he is completely out. He's not easily right now. He was out, and the referee with the one didn't want to call it. I guess it's some of the breaks you have to have in the fight game fighting the referee. Aaron got his crack at 140 pound champion, the Colombian great Antonio Cervantes. Cervantes had been on a four year unbeaten run, posting eight title defenses. But I don't think, despite his experience, that he's ever had anybody that's going to come at him the way Fry is going to come at him. He's going to come at him about twice as fast as anybody he's ever seen. Aaron ran right at him and started mauling like an attack dog let out of an SUV. And we are underway with round one, and fire comes right at him like everybody expected, including the champion. In Cervantes, you will see a very relaxed fighter, no matter what kind of a buzzsaw attack fire puts on him. And he's getting that buzzsaw attack right away. Even when he ran straight on to a nasty right hand, Pryor was up and taunting before a two count windmilling the right before cracking the Colombian with a left hook when the action resumed. Put your feet, hits the canvas, it's a knockdown. This glove did go down. He took the mandatory eight count, but came out showing that he wasn't hurt at all. I really mean, 77 from Carlos Jimenez, and has defended it six times successfully since. Fire, digging to the body with an effective surge. It's a bad cut. Good right hand from Cervantes. He knows he's... In front of his home crowd in Cincinnati, Aaron Pryor commits his regicide. Crowns himself the Mad King of 140, the hooded eyes and outstretched glove. He was in his opponent's face from long before the first bell rings. Bell action round one. Aaron Pryor hit Lennox Blackmore like a panic attack, leveling him with a left hook in the first and staying on him every moment of the fight. Aaron's sheer intensity was suffocating. Linux didn't last long. You can see that for yourselves. There, a left and a right in combination, and Blackmore is ready to go down again. There it is, a left. And maybe this time it's over. The timekeeper standing up, Blackmore right above us. And he doesn't know where he's at. Lane checking and making the fight goes on. Now we have three knockdowns. That's it. He's got to stop. Bill's Lane. I tell you, you fight at the most insistent pace, and I think Davy Jacobs, who's now with you, should get some credit <laughs> because he's got you working harder than you ever worked before. Yeah. Pryor decided to play around with Duan Johnson early. Introducing the fighters quickly and very shortly, and, and there's Pryor taking a little swipe at Duan Johnson as Duan was out there shadow boxing. Johnson just laughing, and they're having a show here before they've even had the instructions. With more erratic pre-fight antics aside, Pryor came out trying to test his legs, moving and circling until Duwan Johnson lands a right hand that would have put down a lesser specimen. There it is, right there. Johnson. Aaron used the opportunity to break dance his way to his feet with a smile on his face like he meant to do that. Pryor saying, I'm fine, gets right up and goes out to us. Of this opportunity because it might not come again. There he goes. He was hurt badly by that left hook. 
Solid left hook from Johnson. Throughout the Wild War, Aaron Pryor played off any punch Johnson could throw. He's vulnerable for left hook. He's only 20 from Detroit, Michigan. And now Pryor comes out with his famous fury. But Johnson standing there going toe to toe with him. And he wobbled him with a body punch. And another one. I mentioned if any edge Pryor would have its maneuverability. He, ma he manages to step to the side and then he nails Johnson. Johnson has the champion in trouble, but Pryor counter punching back perhaps by instinct. We'll see how fresh he is momentarily. As the rounds wore on, Aaron proved as relentless as he was durable. Perhaps it would have finished some other guys by now. Johnson is, is a shot. Spent too many rounds in the ring because of all of the knockouts. Another big right hand and a second one by Johnson. Left hook landed from Johnson. Johnson's winging now. That was see Pryor using his experience. company except <laughs> He said one of the best Pryor. Now you watch a finish. Finally wilting Johnson in the seventh round. But he is still very wobbly. The cross non-stop here. Can't get his hands up, and that's gonna be it. The referee Keel steps in and Aaron Pryor with startling suddenness in the seventh round has retained his junior welterweight championship with a knockout. I fight next. I want to fight Leonard because I feel like I'm the king of the junior welterweights for what I've already done. Pryor made his next defense against two-time title challenger Miguel Montilla. There he goes. There's Pryor going right at Montilla. The experienced vet found himself struggling to cope with Pryor's driven intensity. Montilla came with the game plan of simply punching when Pryor punches. Montilla was determined to keep Pryor on the back foot as much as possible. Miguel, Miguel fought a gritty war, landing some absolute bombs. Pryor not able to land cleanly. Oh, and Montilla does. Oh, oh and up on the by Montilla. <laughs> now, now, great right hand by Pryor. Now, Pryor, now that's the Pryor we know. He's down to business. Pryor told the fans from his stool after the 10th that he would finish Montilla. Great rounds, Aaron Pryor leading through the ropes and telling fans one more round. He said, this is it, Aaron, I'm... This was the round. He was wrong. Put him away, and he has Montilla's power. He goes first. Aaron Pryor looking to end it here in round 11. He step in. Body shot that lifted, lifted the leg of But it wasn't for lack of trying. Montilla made the 12th. As it always was with Aaron, his energy simply prevailed. Now Montilla trying to cover up. They should be all over this corner. The referee should step in there. He's right in there. There it is. It is old Aaron Pryor. Extended to round 12. With the boxing world fascinated by Pryor's feral style, the world began to wonder what Pryor and the biggest names in the sport might look like. With names like Arguello, Duran, and Sugar Ray Leonard on the horizon, Aaron makes his fifth title defense against Akio Kamita. It was as predictably unpredictable as any prior fight. Who will try and box prior. Decisive height of for Aaron walks himself onto a combination hard enough to make him do a somersault. Aaron, as usual, was up and charging before the ref could even start a count. This is the third time that Pryor has been surprised and hit to the canvas in opening round. He was more off balance than anything. The next round, Pryor returns the favor, winding up his straight right before leveling Kamita. dropping him again before the second was out. Down again to end the third. Twice more in the sixth. Oh, 
This time he's got a long way to go. Before the referee steps in, Aaron Pryor would no longer be ignored. He earned his right to fight the best. Aaron had earned his crack at Sugar Ray Leonard. I just beat the number one contender in my weight division. I ain't got nothing to prove there. This so why show. not come up? This is my show, pal. Go ahead. <laughs> Any other questions, please? Who needed only defend his title against a lightly regarded contender. With the fight signed, Pryor was driving out to talk smack to Leonard and hype the boxing match. Over the radio, he hears of Ray Leonard's detached retina. Pryor pulled over and cried for losing the chance to fight Sugar Ray and his $750,000 in guaranteed money. With Leonard partially blinded, Aaron had to look elsewhere. I don't know and he don't know. I want him. Well, you mind, sucker. All right. Come watching me. You what? Mind. Aaron found what he was looking for. But that is another story for another day.